Hi guys, Lisa here. I have been recycling my own paper at home for quite a while now, and I've developed a method that really works for me, and I want to share that with you guys. I will be showing you all the steps that I do and all the materials that I use, as well as give you some alternatives if you don't have all the materials. So if you want to know how to make your own paper at home, please keep on watching. Let's start with all the materials. You will need a relatively large container that is able to hold water. I use a simple plastic storage box. You will also need a sponge or anything else that can soak up moisture, like a cleaning cloth or a towel. To be able to make paper pulp, you will need something to break down the paper and the best way is to use a blender. You should not use this for food again though, so it might be smart to get one just for crafting. If you don't have a blender, there are alternatives, you just have to get creative. You can use a potato masher or a pesto and mortar, anything that can beat paper to a pulp, so possibly even just with your hands. You will also need cloth sheets for transferring your paper onto. Officially, these are called couching sheets. I like to use cotton, but other materials are also possible. These are a very poorly cut up old bed sheet I found at a thrift store, but something like an old tablecloth or t-shirt can also do the job. If you happen to have one, I would recommend using a kitchen strainer for various parts of the process. But if you don't, you can also use your mold and decal. The mold and decal is the most important item you will need. It is simply two frames. One, the decal is just an empty frame that sits on top of the mold, which is the second frame with some form of mesh attached to it. The mold forms the sheets of paper and the decal creates straight edges. I bought mine from Etsy, and you might be able to find them also in your local craft stores, but if you don't want to spend a lot of money, here's a very easy and affordable way to make one yourself. You will need two photo frames where you've taken out everything except the actual wooden or plastic frame part. I got mine from the thrift store. One of the frames is your decal, that one isn't already done, and you can set it aside. The other one will be your mold. You will need to find any kind of mesh. For my first mold and decal, I used this bug screen, but there are many other options. I even saw someone use a mesh that onions come in. How creative is that? I have found that plastic and nylon mesh works better than cloth mesh, but you can make a lot work. Please keep in mind though that the mesh will leave an imprint on your paper, so the finer the mesh, the smoother your paper. Once you have found your mesh, you can cut it to size and you want to make sure you cut it big enough to fold it over the edges. Then when you have your piece, you're going to staple it to your frame. If you have a flat frame like this one, you can fold it all the way over and staple along this side. If you have an uneven frame like this one, you can staple along this edge. If you have a staple gun, that's great, but if you don't, you can just take a regular stapler and open it up like this to create a makeshift staple gun. And then just pick a side you are going to start on and staple the mesh on. You want to make sure you keep the mesh as tight as possible. I would suggest first stapling each side and then adding more staples for security. It doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. Once all the staples are in, you can cut off the excess mesh if there is any, and then your mold is done. You can see there is a little slack in mine, this is still usable, but any more will be difficult to use. Your deco goes on top like this, and there is your homemade mold and deco, ready to make some paper with. So let's get to the next part, prepping your paper. Take what you want to recycle. This can be filled up notebook pages, junk mail, newspaper, or egg cartons. I am using old homework and you want to rip it into small pieces. The material you choose to recycle will influence your result. The stronger the paper you start with, the stronger your recycled paper. Of course, if you have one, you can also shred your paper instead of ripping it. Whatever was written or printed on your paper before will show up in your new paper as small specks. I like to call it the history of the paper. Add the pieces of paper in a container and add water until everything is covered. You want to let it soak so it can get soft enough to be made into a pulp. I would recommend leaving it for at least 12 hours, but the longer you leave it, the softer it gets. So if you're planning to use a method without a blender, you might want to leave it for longer so you can mash it easier. Once you think your paper is soft enough, it is time to turn it into a pulp. I add two handfuls of the soaked paper in my blender and top it off with water. If you look closely, you can see this is different paper that I already had soaking. I blend it with my blender on the highest speed and let it go for quite long to make sure everything gets blended. If your blender isn't as powerful, you can add less paper and more water. Once I think it's done, I take it off to check. If the pulp doesn't have any hard pieces that I can feel, it's done. If not, I blend some more, or I may take out some pulp and add more water if necessary. If you instantly want to make paper, you can just use the pulp straight from the blender, but if you want to store it for later, you can partly strain it. You don't want to strain it completely as it might make your paper lumpy. You want to keep it slightly wet still. I add the strained pulp to a large container and do the same process again and again until all the paper pieces are made into a pulp. You can add the water you strained out from the previous pulp into the blender again and top it up with new water if necessary so you can use the least amount of water. 
If you don't have a blender, you can try the same process with anything else that can break down the paper. Like I mentioned, this can be a potato masher, where you just mash the soft paper together, or you can add the paper with water and some pebbles in a bottle and shake until it becomes a pulp. You might not get the pulp as smooth as with the blender, but it's definitely possible and worth a shot. Once you have your pulp, you can now finally make some paper. You want to start with a container big enough to fit your mold and deco, and add a pretty decent amount of water. Get your pulp ready and add a large handful to the water. I like to start with plenty of pulp in the water. You want to stir very well so all the pulp flows loosely in the water. If you lift up your hand like so, you should only be able to see small pieces. If you see large chunks, keep on stirring. That way you get your paper as smooth as possible. Then get your mold and deco. Align your deco to your mold and make sure you can hold it firmly. Stir up the water so the pulp is floating and dip in your mold and deco. Move it around a little bit and lift it straight. You can move the pins around a bit so the pulp spreads evenly while the water is straining out. I then balance it on one of my arms and use the other to carefully lift up the deco from the mold and place the deco to the side. I then let a little more water run out and then it's ready to be transferred. You want to lay out your cloth sheet. If you use cotton, you don't need to wet it beforehand. And then flip your mold over on the sheet like so. Press it in firmly on all sides and then use your sponge to soak up all the excess water. You can squeeze the water right back into the container. You want to do this all over the paper. And if you don't have a sponge, you can just do it with an absorbent cloth or towel or anything you have. I like to dry the edges extra because these are the areas that tend to get stuck to the mold. I also press in the side I will lift up a little extra too, and pull the cloth tight while I slowly lift up the mold. I transfer the cloth sheet with paper to a hard surface where I carefully stack each sheet on top of each other to save space, and so I can move them easily later. Some things to note while doing this, it's okay to mess up. It's not a problem, it's often very fixable. If your paper is turning out too thin, add more pulp to the water. Is your paper too thick? Add more water. Did you mess up while lifting up your deco from your mold? That's okay, just put the pulp right back into the container, mix it up and start over like nothing ever happened. It's a very forgiving craft. I personally like to add a small handful of pulp to the container every three to five sheets, depending on how thick I am making them. Changing up how deep you scoop with your mold and deco will also change how thick your pages end up. Play around with it. After making a nice stack of papers, I bring them over to my drying area. I use two clothespins per sheet and very carefully pull them off of each other and hang them up on a drying rack. You do want to be careful with this as your paper can very easily be damaged while the pulp is still wet. If you don't want to hang them up, you can just lay out your papers to dry in the sun or inside somewhere. It just might take a little longer. I like to hang them up as it dries quickly and out of the way. I usually just let them dry overnight and come back the next morning. They are now dry and ready to be peeled off their sheets. I say this every time, but this is so satisfying. I first open a small edge with my finger and then peel off the sheet. If the sheet is thin or I'm not careful, it can rip, but this doesn't happen often. You now have your finished paper and you could stop here, but I would still like to flatten them out. I use my book press for this. Shout out to my friend Frank who made this himself for my birthday. But if you don't have a book press, you can use anything else heavy, like a stack of books. It will work the same. I add a stack of paper to the middle of the press, close it up and tighten it, and leave it for a day or two, sometimes even longer. I can then open the press up again, take out the stack, and admire the handmade recycled pages ready to be used. You can see up close that there is a slight texture from the mesh on one side, and a smoother texture from the cloth on the other. You can also see small specks of colors from its previous life. This is what makes every page truly unique. And that is how I make my own recycled paper. I hope this was useful. If you tried this, please tag me. I would love to see. It's at NevermindLisa on both TikTok and Instagram. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. And if you want more paper making content, make sure to subscribe. I will hopefully be posting every week from now on. So for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week.